Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. In today's matchup, we've got a pair of wide receivers who certainly want to be targeted throughout the game. It's Benjamin's Panthers going up against Tate's Lions. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, EA Sports coverage of the NFL sends us to the state of Michigan as we are inside Ford Field in downtown Detroit. Both teams emerging from the Ford Field tunnels just a short time ago. And, of course, the loudest cheers were reserved for the hometown Lions. They're set to go as they will match up with Cam Newton and the Carolina Panthers. And we say hi again, everybody. Brandon Gordon here as we count down to kickoff. I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, Larry pointed out in the open, we've got a pretty good matchup of wide receivers here this afternoon, don't we? And those guys have such a big impact on the game nowadays. We know it's a throwing game, but the guys who can go up and get it, the guys who can break tackles after the catch and make bigger plays, oh yeah, they love spotlight as well. They want the football, they want the attention. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. The Lions trot onto the field led by Matthew Stafford. Boy, what a tough loss against the Atlanta Falcons in week three, Charles. So many come from behind wins last year. They almost had another. Yeah, because of that, you fully expected them to find a way to win because last season, that's what fueled their run to the playoffs. They had three games in a row at home early in the season won all of them on the last possession of the game. So they know how to get it done late. So close in this one, came up just a bit short, but they are going to be tough to deal with all season long. On first down, Stafford here. Ebron with it over the middle, and they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. A gain of six there on first. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. And now the offense for Detroit. With Matthew Stafford, a quarterback, and Marvin Jones, and Golden Tate at wide receiver, we know that Detroit is proficient at throwing the football. But they want to increase their running game production. Only 30th in the league in 2016. They went out and signed offensive guard T.J. Lang and right tackle Ricky Wagner in order to try and get the running game going. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. Out of the gun, Stafford. A dump off for Abdullah. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It goes as a gain of eight that moves the chains. It's a nice job hitting him on the angle route there. Come out of the backfield, cutting sharply across the middle. And that's good timing between the quarterback and his receiver. Effective third down play to move the chains. from the 40 to the 45. Five-yard run. Well, this defense that you see here was pretty good in weeks one and two, Charles, but week three, Drew Brees lit him up. And you hit the key two words right there, Drew Brees, mm -hmm. because dealing with him and what they do on offense in New Orleans, always difficult no matter how good your defense is. And this is a good defense in Carolina. They said they really shut down San Francisco. Buffalo would have given up a field goal to each of them. Yeah, that was it. But when you deal with Drew Brees and the way he spreads the football and the tempo they play, it's a tougher day to play against him. Here's Stafford now on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. 
This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And Tate's got it. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. I don't believe that this opening drive is surprising to either one of us after the time we spent with the coaching staff and players prior to the game. What about you? Absolutely. Not only that, but that big article in this paper this morning about their philosophy on starting games like you're shot out of a cannon, and that's what they've done. Very methodical here on this first drive. Yeah, so many teams talk about that fast start. We're actually seeing it happen right here in front of us. But now the kicker. Can they cap it off by putting the ball in the end zone? Back to the ground now. Here's Abdullah. And the lane closes up quickly as he'll get about three down to the 38. That man has still got it. Thomas Davis can do it all. Drop into coverage, rush the quarterback, and of course make plenty of tackles. Closing in on 1,000 career tackles and consistent. Last year, 106 tackles. The year before, 105. College safety turned linebacker in the NFL. What a career. Again, it's Abdullah. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, and it's going to bring up a third down. Off the corner. Where would he come from? Well, I, guess, I mean, I guess he came off the corner, but really nice play. I like when you're able to pose a question and answer it at the same time. <laughs> That's exactly where he came from, but it's not something that you normally see. Most of the time, we're thinking about those guys covering pass catchers. In this case, he was a big factor in a run game. No gain. Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. From the gun, here's Stafford. And this is going to be incomplete. But not to get too overcritical there because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I don't think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it and... He gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. Now it's Matt Prater on for the Lion field goal try. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this will remain a scoreless game. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. Now a first carry for Jonathan Stewart. And he's going to take this one down to about the 46-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. By the way, partner, that was a 30-year-old running back carrying the ball. Yeah, <laughs> turned 30 back in March, did Stewart. Yeah, I know that people say that you're not supposed to at the age of 30, but Jonathan Stewart, good style, good physicality. He'll continue to run it. Hoping to keep him healthy. Hasn't played a full 16 games since 2011. This is Stewart again. And he'll get it down here to the 43. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. Play fake here on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. 
couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. The tight end, Ed Dixon, was the target. That'll bring up second down. Well, in tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both feet, <laughs> not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, my man. He'll get two on the keeper, but it becomes now a third down. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You foresee incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? The line to gain is the 33 on third down. Out of the gun, Newton. He loses four, and it brings up four. Now a man who subbed in for Andy Lee down the stretch last year, Michael Pilardi, to kick it away. As he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. The Panthers' defense, they make their way back out there now. And as we're going to see right here, they have been laying some pretty electrifying hits in this one. And these are for real. Okay, as you watch, think about putting yourself in that spot, about being the ball carrier or the receiver. I don't want to. And then taking that shot, it is something else. It's not like when we were watching that, that video clip where they showed you how they make sounds for movies. <laughs> this is for real. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got to jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. Yeah, he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. I know it's a cliche, and coaches always talk about it's a team game. We need all 11 to win. But let's face it, Detroit really needs Amir Abdullah to have runs like that all season long. Missed a lot of time with injuries, especially recently. Now, Theo Riddick wound up leading the Lions in rushing last year with just 357 yards. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Operating from the gun. Stafford. Throw left side taken in by Galladay. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. 
And a good swarm to the football defensively as they get him down at about the 40. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Stafford on third down. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. 15 yards there for number 15. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe tapping, and dragging to make sure he gets it done. So we've got a challenge forthcoming here. And new this year, the ref will no longer go to a monitor on the sideline. He'll have a tablet brought out directly to him on the field. Yeah, and that should move things along a little bit quicker. He doesn't have to run all the way over, go under the hood as he used to, and come out and render a decision, talk directly with New York, looking at the tablet, and reach a final call. down throw Stafford he goes underneath to Abdullah and he'll get it down on the plane to the 37 give him eight on the play and it'll make it second down everyone's got to be able to catch the football doesn't matter what position you play but if you're on offense be aware a ball may come your way completed pass play now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground Second down, here's Stafford. Quick hitter here, it's complete. We'll give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. And here comes play number six on this drive. Stafford on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Star Latulale able to swap him from that defensive tackle spot for a loss of five. Look, Carolina had a number of issues last year, and that's why they slumped to 6-10 and 10 after a Super Bowl appearance. But pass rush wasn't a problem for them. They still got to the quarterback. 47 total sacks. That was just one behind Arizona, who led the league. Yeah, I think the biggest issue for them, young corners, they gave up a lot of big plays. his way forward here for a good little gain. Five yards will get him back to the original line of scrimmage, but now they're looking at third and ten. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The Lions on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and ten. From the gun, Stafford. And he'll find Galladay, that's complete. And down he goes, taking it inside the 10, just shy of the 5 at the 6. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 
In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. They'll try to run it in with Abdullah. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. To throw on second down at Stafford. He's got his man. It's caught for a Lion touchdown. Eric Ebron, a five-yard touchdown. And the Lions are going to take a first-quarter lead. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Now Matt Prater for the point after. It's up, it's good, and the Lions lead 7-0. So that one a long 11 play drive and the end result a Detroit touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was, as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Start on the ground. This is Stewart on first. And he'll rumble for about six up across the 20 to the 22. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Second down following the run. They keep it on the ground again to Stewart. And he will lose yardage on the play back at his own 19-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. With my good friend Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon with you. It's the Panthers in possession of the football as we begin quarter number two. They'll need to convert a third and seven, though, to start things out.
A shotgun snap for Newton. Gets it to Benjamin. It's caught. And he's eventually brought down, but not before he reaches the 39, just shy of the 40. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. Now a first down throw for Newton. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Well, that play gives us a quick breather here. I want to look ahead to week four of the NFL season. Carolina at New England. I'm curious if the Panthers can break out of a little funk they're in. A little bit of a clunker at home against New Orleans. Many thought they would win that one. They're trying to get Cam Newton going. And, of course, he's got to go take on Tom Terrific in, in the New England <laughs> Patriots right there in their home turf. How about Detroit at Minnesota? Big NFC North battle. Both teams 2-1 and one in the early going. That seems to be an excellent matchup. And flip it over to the AFC. Tennessee at Houston, a monster AFC South game here in the early going. Kidd had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. From the gun on third down, Newton. And this will complete right side to Funches. And he's got the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 49. Newton finding Funches for the Panther first down. First down. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. And he's brought down. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. And now the passing game here in the second quarter starting to heat up a little bit. Don't you feel the rhythm starting to happen, right? You see it now. The confidence is starting to rise. I think now as a play caller, because that has happened, you lean on it a little bit more. You don't go totally away from running the football. But you do say, guess what? We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. Now Stewart on first down. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Seven yards to go on second down. From the gun, here's Newton. Funches with a catch over the middle. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there. If he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. Complete crisis averted, almost picked. Instead, second down. Tremendous coverage there. Just did not catch the football and complete the interception. But what do they say all the time? 
If he had really good hands, he'd be playing offense. Ooh, long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. Neutral zone infraction. So five yards there is one of the big guys up front moved. And in a 4-3 front, you got the two defensive tackles right near the football. I know there's a lot of movement around there, but they're always taught to have one eye on the football. Apparently, that didn't happen. So they're operating in the red zone. the penalty here's Stewart and they've got it inside the 10 at the 8 it's a good gain of 11 sets him up first and goal so right now what I'm seeing I'm seeing an offense just firing off the ball a lot quicker than they can react and not only that they're sustaining the blocks too I'm seeing guys get six seven yards downfield before there's even a hint of contact of six and there's no doubt in my mind that this guy has been eager for this season talk about Ziggy Ansah for him to get back to sacking quarterbacks as he did in 2015 2016 was really kind of a wash because of an ankle injury him back to the lot of scrimmage but that's it no gain on the play there they're going to need to come up with something better here on third and goal so stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance i'm throwing the ball and i'm not even thinking about play pass i'm gonna let them know right away i'm throwing it but i'm probably giving my quarterback some room sprint him out to one side or the other and give him an opportunity if it breaks down he can take off and run for it that's going to set him back five yards. This offense so far on third down, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and goal. Here's Newton. He's going to get this one out to his fullback. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. The pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. Newton and on comes the kicker Graham Gano from the left hash this from 37 and Gano's kick is right through and they are on the board but still trailing it's seven to three so a 15 play drive can't believe that only resulted in three but it did that is somewhat amazing isn't it when you hold the ball that long 
run offense that well, yet only put three points on the board, it has to be a little bit of a disappointment, doesn't it? it has to. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Here comes Matthew Stafford now to lead his offense back out there. The last series, the ball never hit the ground. Six to six, touchdown pass, so whatever he did then, do it again, right? Yeah, it reminds me a lot of when I watched the best quarterbacks throw seven on seven, or even routes versus air. They're accurate, the receivers catch it, the ball never touches the ground. Or if you want to take it to basketball, a well-executed fast break, right? Pass, 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 finish at the rim, basket. Yeah, ball never hits the ground there either. They start the drive with Abdullah. Try to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. So nothing there. I don't know that that's all in the back, though. you got to look at blocking there, don't you? I would agree with that totally. At some point, they have to win at the point of attack. Instead, it was the defense getting it done again and holding them to no gain. Looking to throw on second down. Stafford. Completing it here to Marvin Jones. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets them a new set of downs. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because they'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. Broken tackle. And some room to maneuver. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. First and ten, Stafford. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. That was very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Second down following the incompletion. Stafford gives to Abdullah. He'll get only a couple down to the 44. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Play action, Stafford. And he'll go down, shy of the 40 at the 41. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies, unable to get it done.
In his fifth year from UCLA, here's Jeff Locke to kick it away. Christian McCaffrey deep for Carolina. And this will be up to the ruling of the side judge here. He says it crossed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. And on to the field, here come the Panthers. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, right? Yeah, a little tired, and if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. On first down, Newton. Funches has it complete. Funches is free. 30. 10 for touchdown, Carolina. Devin Funches, 84 yards. And the Panthers strike quickly here for six points. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. <laughs> that was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Graham Gano on for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Gano out to kick this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. Getting set to go again, Matthew Stafford trots back onto the field. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but bottom line, his team's losing. They got to fix something. And it starts with him. He has to keep that little quarterback strut going right now to make sure that his team sees him as confident. Continue to try and up his game, but just let him know, hey, if I'm around, if I'm the one calling signals and throwing the football, just follow me, we'll get there. Sometimes that will do more to elevate a team than anything else. See if he has that confidence. On first down, Stafford here. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. A big play there, 75 yards. And the Lions strike quickly here for six points. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, <laughs> all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. Aren't any speed <laughs> limits out there? And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Now Prater to add the PAT. And that makes it 14-10. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points.
Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Fielded about a yard deep. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. Start the drive with a run by Stewart. And he'll push forward for about four up to the 23. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Second down, they run with Stewart. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. From the gun on third down. Newton going deep for Benjamin. So they took a shot there on third down. Couldn't get it. Now it's four. Well, they've had a pretty frustrating first half here offensively and then just continued there with that incompletion. Yeah, definitely frustrating for them, but heartening for the other guys. Those stop troops, they're enjoying things right now because they've made it very difficult for them throughout the half. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Big kick that time, 52 yards, and the Lions will take over. Here's the Detroit offense now as they head back out onto the field. And last time, the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up, whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drive is exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was yeah. really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. First down at Stafford. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Amir Abdullah, the intended target, and it's second down. Okay, let's get a shout out real quick in here while we got a second. Jake Elliott, rookie, Memphis, 61 yard field goal to lift the Eagles to victory. Man, that was impressive. How about that? Only his second game with the Eagles. He'd been drafted by Cincinnati and was actually on their practice squad. Caleb Sturgis gets hurt for the Eagles. They take Elliott off the practice squad late in the week, of right before uh, week two, the week two game at Kansas City. He shows up, and I asked the special teams coach, I said, well, what do you tell him? What do you talk to him? He said, I don't do anything. I just stay out of the way, <laughs> let him kick and ascertain from there. Looks like that strategy paid off really well for the Eagles with that 61-yard game winner in week three. Meanwhile, all the Giants fans just turned off their gaming systems. <laughs> In just two minutes' time, don't forget, we'll get you to Orlando for our halftime report. To bring it to you, who else but Larry Ridley? Now that man knows his football. Go get him, Larry. The Lions on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and six. Out of the gun, Stafford. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. 
You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Here's Jeff Locke now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Shifts by him, and now running right through him. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Panthers will get it here as they take possession. Cam Newton getting ready to go again on offense. Been a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way, and they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field try to make sure his teammates come along with him and he feels like if I do better everyone will do better and that's what we're seeing from him right now got to have a little extra determination yeah a little extra determination he has thrown the touchdown pass no interceptions for him personally to this point now Newton and his throw is incomplete Hey, you know, switching gears for a second, we were talking before the broadcast about the 0-3 teams who might have the best chance to turn their season around right now. you got the Bengals, Browns, Chargers, Giants, and uh, 49ers. Who do you think out of that group? I'm going to go with the New York Giants. They play in a very tough division, as we well know. But the way the offense came alive in the fourth quarter against Philadelphia, if that continues to ascend, they have an excellent defense. Supreme confidence because remember they went to the playoffs last season. Right. They think they can get back there with a quarterback who's done it at a big time level before and Eli Manning. So I would pick the Giants number one to turn things around. But I keep an eye on the San Francisco 49ers. To me that they're they are a team that's going to continue to improve throughout the year. The record at the end might not show it, but they're going to be awfully good down the road. The Panthers on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and ten. Newton going to hand it off to McCaffrey. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. And now the Lions going to stop us momentarily as they call a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. Here's Michael Pilardi now as he's on to punt for Carolina. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. 51 yards on the punt there. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. So the Lions offense ready to go back out onto the field. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Throwing on first down. Stafford throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Golden Tate, his intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. But well, we got to make a big pivot because we got a second. We said we wanted to get this in to talk about Kareem Hunt and what he has done, Charles. From off the radar to almost nine yards per carry, he's been sensational. Maybe he should change his uniform number from 27 to 1 for all the firsts that he's putting up here as a rookie year. All right, first rookie since Matt Forte at the Bears in 2003 to go to the century mark in all-purpose yards in his first three games, each game. 183 yards from scrimmage, including a touchdown in his last ball game against the Chargers. And he's the first rookie with a 50-plus yard touchdown in each of his first three games. What a start for Kareem Hunt. Oh. 
So a challenge coming down from the booth, and that's where these challenges come from, of course, in the final two minutes of the half. Yeah, now we're going to New York, right? That's command central for the officials. They'll talk, they'll take a look at it, communicate with the referee at the game site, and issue a final decision because they do have the final call now. and 10. Stafford. And he just gets rid of it. Throws it away. A wise move there. Looked like nobody open. Now second down. Well, partner, I got to get your thoughts while we have a second on the end of that Falcons-Lions game. People were shocked that that Golden Tate touchdown was called a touchdown. Was overturned. Were you surprised? I was surprised because normally they stick with the original call unless they find what they call indisputable visual evidence, and they felt like they did. They thought Tate's knee was down before the ball broke the goal line. I think they were right about that, but the killer was there was still time left on the clock, yeah, so the Detroit thought they were going to get another, another opportunity. But because of what had happened there, the rules said there had to be a 10-second runoff which left no time on the clock. And you know who felt the worst about making that announcement? The referee. Yeah. They never want to be the ones that feel like they actually decided a game, but by rule, they had to do it, and that ended it without Detroit getting their last shot. Just brutal for the folks in Motown. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. again at Stafford. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the offensive unit called the T.O. And now we are ready to resume play. He took a hit on that last play. Now let's see how he and the offense respond on second. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. The Lions on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and 11. Now the Notre Dame man. This is Theo Riddick. And he'll be well short of a first down as he stopped again right at the line of scrimmage. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Now it's Matt Prater on for the Lion field goal try. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And the 10-year vet knocks it through the goal post. And that moves him up by a touchdown now at 17-10. 
So a good kick that time, and he's able to redeem himself from the previous miss. And fortunately for him, he got the chance to do that not long after missing the first time. Sometimes a whole game goes by, and you don't get that chance at all. So you keep it with you till the next time you take the field. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Panthers offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure, if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. First down, it's Newton. His throw incomplete. The intended target that time was Jonathan Stewart. And now it's second down. Hey, partner, let me take you league-wide for a second. Surprised right now that we only have two 3-0 teams remaining, Atlanta and Kansas City? After last week's games, yes, because a number of them came in with great momentum, and you thought that that would continue. I thought Tampa Bay would win at Minnesota and continue to be undefeated. You know, I thought that uh, Oakland yeah. had a great chance to be undefeated after playing at Washington. But this league... Parity is the word, and each and every week you better be ready to play. But with Atlanta and Kansas City, I thought Atlanta, they shook off the demons of that Super Bowl slump right there in the first game against Chicago when they won a close one, and they've elevated since then. And Kansas City, they continue to be red hot. The last couple of seasons, they've been hard to beat. Third down, here's McCaffrey. And he is going to lose yardage here. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Fielded just inside the 20. A big kick there. We'll call it 56 yards on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Here comes Matthew Stafford now to lead his offense back out there. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first-half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Yeah, that was a safety that came through and made the play, but there's no doubt in my mind, he hits like a linebacker, and we see a lot of that in today's NFL, don't we? And that time, we do indeed a big hit for a loss.
So we've reached halftime here in Detroit with the Lions out on top. As we send you down to our EA Sports Studios in Orlando, where we find our man Larry Ridley with our halftime report. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Lions are up right now and are looking to keep up the pressure moving forward. The Panthers didn't play their best, and they'll need to be at their best now to come back. All right, here we go. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from the first half. Lions have it on second and five. Stafford's got the completion here, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. Lions is up now by seven. Now to early in the second quarter. It's Ziggy Ansa here to get into the QB for the sack. This one ends up as a loss of six. Now first and ten. Cam Newton looking for his big receiver, Devin Funches. And this long run goes for a touchdown. They go ahead by three. Lions have it late in the second. Stafford's got the completion here, and he'll win the sprint to the end zone. The lead grows to four. So that'll do it from here in Orlando. Let's get you back up to Ford Field as we hand it back over to Brandon Guy. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fozzie Whitaker now on the return. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm. A lot of times, the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Starts the third quarter on the ground with Stewart. And he'll wind up with about six, up past the 30 to the 31. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to him back. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And not much of an opening there as he's only going to get this to about the 32. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. They'll try and pick it up with McCaffrey. It goes for a gain of 10, and it's a first down. Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Newton turns and hands to Stewart. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. 
Looks like they're establishing a pretty good pattern here because they've been very heavy in the running game on the last four plays. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. So far, four plays in this drive, all four on the ground. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's brought down. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half, things haven't worked so well in the first go around. they want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it, and they've run it well here to start the second half. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now a play fake here on first down. And he finds a man on a crossing route. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. On first and ten, Newton. This will be caught inside the ten. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. Back-to-back -back gains of 17, and they are really on the march now. It's a first down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play. But what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything. And sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. First and goal from the five. And he'll get him a bit closer as he's down to the two-yard line. It's a gain of a couple, and it'll be second and goal. Not a lot of headway on that carry, but when you're dealing with a defensive line that can cover up your center, sometimes you got to think about getting out of that play. Not going to be a lot of space when that happens. McCaffrey, and he takes it into the end zone for a Panthers touchdown. A great play there, taking it in from two yards out. And the Panthers are now an extra point away from tying up this game. And there you go, nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments, let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking, beats good tackling on that play, and result, touchdown. And he gets it to go, and we're all even. 17 apiece. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. 
First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan showing you. They'll run it now out of the gun. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. Here's Stafford now on second down. He's going to loft it deep right side. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. That one goes for 36 yards. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And now a first down following that long gain. They go play action here on first down. He's going to let this one go deep. And a scary incompletion almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Well, after the success they had on the second play of the drive, I think they were trying to recreate it with that pass, weren't they? Yeah, they were trying to go a little tic-tac-toe, three plays and in the end zone. I like that. Can I just put the X in the middle of the block as the defense <laughs> just did there? Sure. Second down now after the incompletion. Play faked Abdullah. It's Stafford. Ebron caught left side. And he'll get this one down to about the 20 yard line. Officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that would look pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a five yard or a 15 yard inadvertent or not. Now it's a lot easier. You see it, you call it. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. play action. Here's Stafford. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. And yes, they want the points, so they will decline the penalty. No question there. You don't think they spent a couple of seconds mulling over what the penalty would do I don't even do know them? why they asked the sideline. Not at all. When you put the ball in the end zone on a takeaway, take the points and keep moving. Prater on to add the extra point. take a seven-point lead now. A drive there of just four plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown for the Lions.
out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This will be taken in at the one. Carolina getting set to take the field. They did what they had to do to start this third quarter. Went down, got the touchdown to cut the lead, but the matching touchdown a moment ago, and we're right back where we started at halftime. Yeah, you're exactly right, partner. They had a little bounce in their step after scoring that first touchdown, but the defense gave one up, and that's the problem right now. Can they get better play from their defense while they continue to score on offense? Newton gives off to Stewart. Oh, good move. And he'll get about three here as he's out to the 30. I think that's about as good a three-yard run as you're going to see. And he actually did with a little bit of flair, didn't he? back at the 27. He lost two there, and it's third down. I know they've got to be careful not to go to the well too often, but it's a fine line, isn't it? Because sometimes, if you've got success, you want to just keep pounding away. But no success there. They rallied quickly on the defensive end. The Panthers on third down. They've converted three times in eight chances. This is third and ten. Off play action. Newton. And he gets it to Funches complete. And he is knocked down from the side. He got 29 yards that time. We often, with Cam Newton, talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope. He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They go play action with Stewart. Now Newton. Going deep for Benjamin. And that'll be caught. Panthers touchdown. It's Benjamin with a grab. Kelvin Benjamin, 44 yards. And the Panthers are now an extra point away from tying up this game. All right, partner, let's go to cliche time. We're all back to even after that score tied the game. Gano for the extra point. And that will tie our game here in the third quarter. Just a four-play drive that time. And the end result, a Panthers touchdown. separating these two teams on the scoreboard as the kicks away here. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. So here come the Lions now. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. 
when you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Now Stafford hands to Abdullah. And not too much going there as he'll get it up to the 23-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. So second and nine, the defense looking to put them in a bad spot here. From the gun, here's Stafford. To the right and complete to Galladay. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is a receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. Offense comes to the line now, first and 10. They run with Abdullah. Pretty move. And takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. Personal foul, face mask, defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. Fresh set of downs here. They'll fake the give. Now Stafford. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here. That looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open. And this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Here's Riddick. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get them into a manageable third down because they had the incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. The Lions on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and six. Now Stafford. Oh, a hit. He lost the football. Stafford puts it on the ground. And a little bit of good fortune there. He wasn't able to get it back, but he did have a teammate on the spot able to retain possession for them. Here's Jeff Locke now, as he's on to punt for Detroit. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Carolina getting set to take the field. The last possession, these guys were able to tie the game with a touchdown, and now they'll have a chance to move out in front. Yeah, let's give a big assist to the defense who got the ball back. The special teams went out there and handled things. They've got it. They've got momentum. I know they're eager to get out there and put it on display. A 
Another run for Stewart. He's been busy. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there. Second down. But we stopped on that play. We've had plenty of carries all afternoon. Every now and then, the defense is going to win one, but I don't think they'll shy away from handing it to him the rest of the game. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and ten. Throwing is Newton. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Panthers on third down, not quite 50%, four for nine. This is third and 10. Out of the gun, Newton. It's caught, Shepard. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. And they pick up 25 as they convert on third. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. This is Stewart. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Ezekiel Ziggy Ansah with a tackle for loss. Just think he's still learning the game of football. Didn't play a heck of a lot of it in his native country. And at BYU, was just scratching the surface before he hit the NFL. Yeah, from Ghana, where he really liked soccer and basketball. But football's okay for him, right? Yeah, I think it's worked out very well. Drafted on potential, he's realizing it here. On second down, here's Newton. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. They were looking to get it to Kelvin Benjamin there, and it's third down. They always say that real estate is about location. Well, guess what? When it's a slant route, the quick ones, timing, timing, timing. Got to be able to lead your man with the football. And the timing off right there, threw it behind him. <laughs> throwing on third down, Newton. And he is going to be taken down. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. Ezekiel Ansah able to put an end to that play and in so doing put an end to this third quarter. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Ford Field. All even as we get ready to start the fourth. Here's Michael Pilardi now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And Detroit getting set to go now. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Stafford on first down. He'll find a man over the middle. It's Galladay. And he's able to get up here to the 26. A gain of six there on first. 
Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or? Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. The second down run for Abdullah. Uses the spin. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. So the offense has it first and 10. From the gun, Stafford. That a scary incompletion, almost picked off. It would have been their first INT of the game. Instead, second down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way. So he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it, just move on to the next play. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. Abdullah, and some room to roam now get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A nice pick up there of 11 yards and it'll move the sticks. For so many years, I was convinced it was a myth, you know, because you always hear about the smaller running back, like it's lost, you can't find him, and sometimes that's part of his genius. But it's true. You get behind big offensive linemen, the defensive line guy's trying to find him, trying to peek around people to see him, and he gets lost. But this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense, picking up big yardage. Riddick with a carry. Pushing forward for three up to the 48. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Decent chunk of yardage still left here. Second and seven. Back to Reddick. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Three yards on the pickup. That's going to set up an interesting third and about four to go. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. The Lions on third down, not quite 50%. Four for nine. This is third and four. Operating from the gun, Stafford. And he connects with Ebron. The 20. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. Eric Ebron, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Lions have broken our tie as they take the lead. I know we often laugh, and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they lead. And now they'll be looking to their defense to preserve that lead. Now Prater to add the PAT. And they will take a seven-point lead now. So this drive spans seven plays. And the end result, a Detroit touchdown.
The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. First down. Caught on the left side by Benjamin. And he's brought down after a good game. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all. And now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game. You can't have those kind of plays. Newton on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard. Maybe from you. I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. <laughs> on second and ten, Newton. And his throw here is incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. The Panthers on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This is third and ten. From the gun, here's Newton. Pressure too strong. Down he goes. Haloni Nata in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that'll lead to a fourth down. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This will be spotted just shy of midfield. A 59-yard attempt. And this one will not get there. It's off to the left anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Amir Abdullah gearing up now to lead this offense. And after a sluggish start, he's really bounced back. The numbers bear that out. And you're a baseball guy, partner. How many at bats over the course of a baseball season? Oh, boy. Four about in three, a game. Yeah, about the four in a four game. Four times 162. 350 or so, right? Sometimes it takes a while for a guy to get going. That's my point. It's not the first few carries. You don't worry about that. As they go along, get that guy lathered up, get those blocking assignments down. Those two-yard gains turn into bigger gains as the game moves along. First down, Abdullah. And he's brought down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves his sticks. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? 
Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Gun Stafford. And his throw is incomplete. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of, otherwise, he was going to get sacked. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Throwing again, Stafford, and he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete, and he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. The Lions on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for 10. This is third and four. From the gun, Stafford. Oh, incomplete, nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got a lead, you've got to protect it, and he's taking chances, putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And he'll lose yardage here, back at the 41. It would have been a long field goal. The fake doesn't work out. I remember being taught that cliches have become so for a reason. A lot of times they're true, right? What's that they used to tell us about letting sleeping dogs lie? Well, this one wasn't sleeping. Maybe it was just slumbering a little bit. But taking that gamble there, you've got the lead. You may have ignited them now they stopped you. That's exactly right. If you take the points here, you don't shift momentum necessarily on that play. You probably just did. And the attention now shifts to Kelvin Benjamin. And I know that they double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself, is it? Right. Usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. On first down, Newton. Now he'll let it go deep over the middle. And this will be caught at the 30. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Give him 30 yards there. Well, we haven't been shortchanged on offense. Another fun play to watch there on the deep pass. This game has the feel of, what, a, a turkey bowl, a Thanksgiving day. You know, when we get together this year, when the Davises and the Gardens get together, <laughs> that's what our playbook's going to look like, like they're drawing them up in the dirt. And so far, it's working for both of them. So here we go, first and 10 now. A shotgun snap for Newton. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Ten yards still left on second down. Watch 
to throw again. Newton, he's got a man. It's his fullback. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Now a play fake here on first down. Incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Throwing again, Newton. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have him looking at third and ten. McCaffrey on the counter. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. He lost two, and it brings up four. Now that play was doomed right from the start. They just about ran into every defender on that one, didn't he? It felt like everyone got a piece of that tackle. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This from 36 yards out. And Gano's kick is right through. And the drive will wind up yielding three. So an interesting call there to take the three. I guess they're thinking their hands were tied, but in the fourth quarter, that field goal, it really might not help them much at all. Yeah, I mean, you still need a touchdown. Another field goal does you no good, so it'll be interesting to see what the media reaction is if the score stays where it is. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. Now the Lions offense, they get ready to head back out there. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. This is Abdullah. Oh, he spins again. Oh, and now he bowls him over. Amir Abdullah. The 40. He's at the 30. Touchdown, Detroit. Amir Abdullah, 83 yards. And the Lions are able to grow their Massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, right? Big time jaunt all the way to the end zone.
Prater on to add the extra point. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Now to kick this one away, and off it goes. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And the Panthers coming out now. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. down it's Newton wide open receiver complete and he takes this one all the way across midfield into enemy territory down to the 40 yard line First down throw for Newton. And it's hauled in by Ed Dixon. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. First and 10, Newton. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness that defensive line is eating them alive. second down looking middle and it's incomplete well too much oomph too much mustard there on that pass they really turned it loose didn't they really cut loose with that one sharp strong didn't lead to a completion though made it very difficult and the offense looks to pick up the first here on third after that incompletion Newton. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey. 
And that time he's smothered as he's wrestled down right near the 27. The well, screen gets seven, but it's not enough, and it'll be fourth down. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. So now off goes Newton, and on comes the kicker, Graham Gano. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. And Gano's kick is right through. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. All right, so you needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal then maybe not exactly what they wanted, but it's a necessary first step. Still plenty of time remaining, but you could really use a stop defensively after the kickoff, preferably a three and out. After knocking through the field goal, here's Gano back out there now for the kickoff. This is taken about seven yards deep, and they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. All right, let's discuss Amir Abdullah. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. First down at Stafford. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Five yards on the pickup, and it'll bring up a second down. It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why. What we just saw, shedding those tackles, and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play. One-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield. After the catch, when they're running with the ball, they think they're going to win those, too. It's brought in left side by Tate. Golden Tate's going to go. Touchdown, Detroit. Golden Tate, 70 yards. And the Lions add on to their lead. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him, let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? RAC. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. Now Prater to add the PAT. And the lead is up to 15 now. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. <laughs> and he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. 
Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> they weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. On first down, Newton. It's caught right side, Dixon. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time's going to run off the clock. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Draw play, Newton to Stewart. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So it's Panther football as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. They go play action here on first down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for the connection with Devin Funches, and that'll bring up second down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. Second and 10, Newton again. He hits Stewart in the flat. Room to run past midfield. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That good for 19 and a first down. Throwing on first down, Newton. His throw incomplete. That one didn't quite make it to the target, but that's not always a function of the strength of the arm of the quarterback, is it? Sometimes there's just too much pressure there. In any case, the ball doesn't arrive. Offense still needing 10 yards, second down. To throw again, Newton over the middle. It's incomplete. Curtis Samuel, the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. And the Lions going with an extra DB here on third down. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Neutral zone infraction, defense. So a jump there defensively. And it's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. spot any tendency here on this third down they could have run it or passed it either one was available they chose to try and get it through the air but they run successful and they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down so trailing here in the last quarter let's see how this plays out 
As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Lions will take over. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none. Yes, exactly right. We get a look at the Carolina defense as they work their way into position. And with this deficit, let's be honest, it's time for them to get a stop. And partners, you understand very well from our time together and visiting with coaches, defensive coordinators tend to be a little more emotional, a little more high strung than others. <laughs> they are. I have a feeling that that speech came out about taking a stand and bowing up in this possession. Yeah, that's where the, this word pride comes out, right? In a big way. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. tackle but then quickly brought down and now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers it's just their first they've got two more to use here in the final stages Second down following the run. Well, look at this, a tight end carry. And no room that time, getting it to about the 46. The Panthers are going to take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and five. They'll run it now out of the gun. And a minimal gain here as he's up to about the 47-yard line. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Here's Jeff Locke now, as he's on to punt for Detroit. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. And last time they were very fortunate this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory. But the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? <laughs> That was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold but it he up. he trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Now we'll see what his offense can do. Here's Newton. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. And 
And on second and ten now. Throwing again. Newton toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. third down. Newton. And he gets it to Funches complete. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 45. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. And now a first down following that long gain. Throwing again is Newton. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. Back to the air, Newton on second down. And he lost the football. And this is scooped up by the Lions. And they will set up shop at their own 46-yard line. Well, that drive wasn't a case of wanting to put points on the board. It was needing they to, had to have having to, to, and they didn't get it done. Yeah, it didn't get it done, and now you look at the situation and the point differential, two scores, pretty much game, set, man. How about the takeaway, though, huh? How about those defensive guys? So out now come the Lions, and they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Stafford down to a knee, and with it, he's going to ensure his guys a victory. Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Lions as we say so long from Ford Field.